Welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, the government shutdown is now entering its fourth week, and neither side has moved much. The president has been arguing for the past three years that the United States needs a wall on its southern border. Agree with his positions or not, Trump has explained why he believes that repeatedly and in great detail, most recently in a live address to the country. Democrats, meanwhile, have argued the opposite. America should not have a border wall, they've said again and again. But the difference is they really haven't explained why. At various times, Democratic leaders have told us that walls don't work, walls are racist, walls are wasteful, walls are insufficient, walls are excessive, and walls are too old-fashioned. Walls are either medieval or ancient, depending upon who's reading the talking point at the time. Some of these arguments are semi-real, others are transparently fake, still others flatly contradict one another. Rhetorically, the Democratic case against walls has been a mess from the beginning. At one point, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tried to bring order to the chaos by flatly declaring that walls are immoral. She recently she said that repeatedly with the force of a religious edict, which in effect it was. But in the end, the theology of it all was just too complex. It seemed to confuse people. How can walls be immoral if a lot of those who oppose walls have walls around their own homes? That was a tough case to make, even for a persistent faith leader like Nancy Pelosi. Finally, Pelosi just gave up. Yesterday, she accepted the inevitability of a border wall. But here's the catch, the hidden trap door in the space-time continuum that Pelosi is famous for in Washington. Yes, Democrats now support a border wall, but no, it's not the kind of wall you had in mind, the kind of wall you can touch or the kind of wall that might keep unwanted people out of your country. It is instead a digital wall. It's a massive, invisible edifice constructed entirely of virtual ones and zeros that reside in some Amazon server farm somewhere in suburban Virginia. It is the wall of the future, in other words, a wall that Google might build and probably will. Pelosi calls it a technological wall. We are proposing is to build the infrastructure of the ports of entry, strengthen that, the ports of entry. Spend the money, it's hundreds of millions of dollars, but accessible uh, to have the scanning technology to scan cars coming through for drugs, contraband of, of, of any kind, uh, weapons even. Repair the roads, facilitate immigration and trade in those regions. The positive, uh, uh, shall we say, almost technological uh, wall that can be built is what we should be doing. Of course, a technological wall. Why didn't we think of that? But wait, you say, aren't all walls technological walls? The only difference, of course, is in the kind of technology they employ? Well, yes. But before you get hung up on some semantic point, just be grateful that Pelosi is using the W word at all. There was a time not so long ago when she was telling us that a fleet of lawnmowers would be enough to secure the border. Let's talk about where the, a more serious structure might be necessary, where fencing will do, where mowing the grass so that people can't be smuggled through the grass. Well, at a certain point, you begin to wonder if Democrats are really as serious as they say they are about wanting to secure our border. Maybe you've asked yourself that question. Well, wonder no more. They are not interested, officially. Democrats support our immigration crisis, which they will be quick to remind you isn't actually a crisis at all, but part of the poem at the base of the Statue of Liberty. Democrats' main interest is in continuing the status quo, and they want to do that by making certain that no effective barrier is ever built along our southern border. To achieve that, Democrats and their faithful lackeys in the press will say anything, literally anything. Yesterday, to name but one among many examples, Democrat Katie Hill of California, a member of Congress, accused the president of engaging in a form of terrorism for disagreeing with her. It gets more and more frustrating every single day uh, to see how irrational he is, and it, it, it's, we can't accept this anymore. To me, this is political terrorism. Terrorism! Maybe that's next week's talking point. Check the Sunday shows to see if it makes an appearance there. This week, the phrase was, vanity project. The wall they're telling you is somehow the president's vanity project, like a remodeled basement rec room or the Clinton presidential library. Some consultant thought up that line and emailed it to Pelosi and Schumer, who made certain that every Democrat in Washington included it in virtually every publicly uttered sentence for a period of at least 24 hours, which of course they were happy to do being robots. Watch.
uh, construction brigade uh, for the president's vanity project. Doesn't necessarily require our building a vanity project concrete wall. For one thing, this is a vanity wall. The president is holding it up because of his vanity project. The president of the United States has a vanity project that he doesn't want to give up. He's spent on the issues that impact them every day, not on the president's vanity project. This issue mm -hmm. is about a vanity project for this president. Right. Vanity? Well, that's a new concern in Washington. As it turns out, vanity is actually the main reason the left loves in mass immigration in the first place. They let millions of poor people into your country at your expense, but they get to feel like heroes for doing it. It's really the equivalent of forcing a stranger to dump his wallet into the collection plate at gunpoint and then taking the tax deduction for it. It's a pretty great deal if you're the one holding the gun. In fact, you might call it the ultimate vanity project. Victor Villa is a retired special ICE agent, and he joins us tonight. Mr. Villa, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you, Tucker, for having me on. So, so what, do you, what do you make of this? The technological wall, the vanity project, you've spent your life policing our borders. Do we need a, a physical wall, an actual wall? Well, well, Tucker, I have to say this is personal. Uh, I've, I've worked in Mexico. Uh, I've worked on the border. I'm born and raised there. Um, I was attacked, and Jaime Zapata lost his life, Agent Zapata, right next to me while we were on assignment in Mexico. So I know that this is real, and the crisis is real, and the border wall is very much needed. This is a physical barrier that's going to help our border agents down there, help them just like uh, the other technology would help them, the, uh, the drones, the, uh, the sensors, all the other uh, technology that comes along the border the border wall is just another tool that's going to help them do that, and it's much needed so they could then focus on those areas where that traffic is going to be infiltrated through. So in the shooting that you referred to, you were hit three times. You were shot three times by a member of a Mexican drug cartel. How do you, yes. as someone who went through that, what's your response when you hear members of Congress, congressional leaders say that there's no crisis at all and that we're imagining it, and in fact it's racist to say there's a crisis at the border? How do you respond to that? The crisis is real. I've lived it. I've worked it. Um, the, um, the especially the the racist comments is just unreal. Uh, Mexico now uh, is looking at to starting to control their own southern border right. by sending their own federal troops down to the Guatemala and Belize border because now they're feeling the impact of these immigrants coming through their country. And so, are they going to be racist as well? Um, and so, it's just absurd to to think that it it, it makes it. A racist statement because you want or makes you a racist because you want a wall but let me tell you what's really immoral what's immoral is the exploitation of our asylum laws yeah. Congress needs to uh, shut down and and re redo that those asylum laws and legislation uh, I'll give you an example Tucker if if an adult person comes into the, the country with a minor child and presents themselves to the Border Patrol and turns himself in seeking asylum if that adult person has a criminal history, and, and it's known to have a criminal history, Border Patrol is going to have to still admit that person in with the child, even though that person is now inadmissible to come into this country, we'll have to allow them to come in and, and with the child to seek, uh, 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 wait for their asylum hearing two to three years from now, and we'll never hear from that person. And maybe that adult person is or not the, the parent of that child, and we'll never yeah. know what happens to that child as well. So there's a real crisis at the border happening on right now. Ha have you spoken to the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, or to Democratic leaders as they've, as they've formulated their position in this debate over the border wall? Has anyone talked to you? No, but I would love to. There is a, a major disconnect between Washington and, and Congress and what's going down in, in real life in the border. It, it would be so effective to have them just at least go down there and not just for the photo op or just for uh, you know for a 10 minute walk where there's actual wall that actually works uh, thanks to Jim uh, Acosta but to actually learn what the real crisis is down there not not today Tucker this has been going on for decades it's just now the influx and I talked to uh, Border Patrol agents and they tell me that they want this response to go forward with the wall. They're so afraid that if, if this doesn't go through, they can't imagine the influx of uh, uh, illegal immigrants trying to come through because they're going to be sending the wrong message. Yeah. 
I, I, I can't imagine how you feel. I mean, if I, if I was shot three times by a drug cartel and watched my partner murdered, and then someone called me a racist because I wanted a wall, I, I don't know how you remain so calm, but I'm certainly impressed that you do. Mr. Villa, thank you very much for joining us and for what you had to say. Thank you, Tucker, for having me.